we are all God, but we're pretending we're not. Um, as a uh, Christian pastor, I love that concept. Uh, and that may surprise you. But uh, when I think of what in the Christian tradition, it's there in the Hindu tradition, the, the sense of the Trinity, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, uh, Krishna, Shiva, uh, Brahma, Vishnu, um, this is present in, in several uh, spiritual traditions, the main ones, in which it is not enough for the divine simply to be, but must be in relationship. That's the nature of uh, creative energy and consciousness. So the divine, the consciousness separates from self in order to reflect back on self. And in that, there is a third entity, right? The energy, the relationship creates that dynamic between, and I like to call that uh, spirit. So as uh, God conceives, uh, right? Spirit creates and uh, universe experiences. And uh, we have that Trinitarian image within our, ourselves as well. This is a, a fantastic concept. So each of us are unique manifestations of the underlying consciousness from which reality emanates and is sustained. Except we're pretending we're not. And that's part of the game. That's part of the, the play, the divine experience of creative, um, dynamic, right? Creative expression. The universe becomes the experience of the divine. So um, I touched upon that, as I'm sure many of you had, and so many at these conferences in my near-death experience. Um, I see uh, Guinevere, uh, I think that's your name there. My glasses are off. Yeah, my, my near, I'm, I'll talk about my NDE briefly. Um, I was doing a hospital church service in a hospital, and I had a um, type of cancer. I've survived this four times called pheochromocytoma, and it creates a Molotov cocktail of chemicals that explode when your adre adrenal gland turns on and nothing ignites the adrenal gland like public speaking. So I was a student minister and I was nervous about that uh, on my internship. And sure enough, the, the tumor blew during the, the initial parts of my sermon. <clears throat> I've joked that I put a lot of people unconscious on Sunday mornings, but it's not good when the minister goes down. Uh, and I was out before I hit the floor and suddenly transformed onto a, uh, a dimension of reality in which I experienced myself as a fully integrated person. Uh, it was a grassy hill. There was a tree at the top of the hill. I wanted with every fiber of my being, such as I had fibers in my being, I wanted to run to the top of that hill and get to that tree. I knew that if I did that, I'd never come back here. I was one with every blade of grass as it moved one with the, the tree and the light that it was drinking in through its branches. And that light was love itself. Uh, because of that, my new creed is that uh, God is love, right? Those are synonyms. So our task is to become it and to realize we are it. Your spirituality is not determined so much by what you believe as it is by how you love. Breaks down all the walls, doesn't it? So I wanted to run to the tree. I couldn't. There was an entity there, a masculine being. He felt like my best friend, in, infinitely powerful and graceful and, and kind and compassionate. And we walked and talked about my life. And he, uh, he basically said, David, it's great to see you. Things are going well. You can't stay. You have to go back. You have more work to do. I didn't care about that. I wanted to stay. So I just kept saying, let's run to the tree. Right, let's go. Um, but the, the big thing I want to comment on pertinent to this workshop is ego identity there. I didn't have an ego, uh, at least not in the way that I do here. I had an identity. I was still me. And I was still very much kind of a human, this form, walking on what felt like grass in a reality that was more real than this cardboard cutout. And... Um, I had, I had thoughts, but communication was instantaneous, consciousness to consciousness. I had desires, desire to stay. I had emotions, joy, elation, as well as um, sadness, realizing I wasn't going to stay. Right? I had these very human dimensions of um, the experience. And yet I was also suddenly congruent, authentic, transparent, and integrated in a way I've never been here. 
So as I speak with you, part of me is not here. I'm reflecting on the words I just said and thinking about the slides to come. And I'm wondering if Rebecca is going to be able to plug in, right? I'm not fully present. And um, I have a small, small ache in my back and I can hear sounds going on in the hospital corridor. So am I fully present? No. In addition, there's so much of me that is in my subconscious that I'm not even aware of. I'm not fully integrated, but there I was. And I was more whole, right? Which is technically the meaning of the word salvation than I've ever been here. Now, he said, you have to go back. And my heart sank and he put his hand on my shoulder and said, don't worry, we will be with you and we'll see you later. Boom, I was back. And suddenly, all of that receded and was buried down into my subconscious because the wetware of my brain and my, my thoughts, the, the software, which, which is my operating system, my identity, my, my, my being, my thinking, could not contain that state. So it must become suppressed. And then, as you know, it takes about 10 years for adults to integrate near-death experience. Gradually, it surfaces. I uh, descended into this compressed form, and uh, they uh, heard the voices of the nurses and the doctors checking, you know, Dean, are you okay? And my ego also kicked in because I felt shame. I passed out in front of everyone. I was embarrassed. And I'd passed out several times from this tumor. And I apologized. I said, I'm sorry, I scared everyone, right? And um, they wrapped me in a blanket. They took my vitals. I had a bump on my head, but no other signs. They didn't know about the pheochromocytoma. Um, it's called parent ganglioma when it's off the adrenal gland. So technically that's, that's what I had. So they sent me home where I crawled into bed and I grieved. I wept myself to sleep, longing for that state of wholeness and love once again, not knowing what to do with it. You'd think I would as a minister, you'd think I'd get in the church pulpit the next Sunday and preach, but I didn't tell anyone for years. You're going through existential dissonance, not just cognitive dissonance. So the integration of this is um, part of what I do here in the hospital, and I'm so glad, right? So I've had this cancer four times, very lucky to be alive, a near-death experience and several uh, spiritually transformative experiences and encounters with angels and um, guidance. So uh, it tells me that despite our bumbling along and the ridiculous nature of our ego identity, they are very good at what they do and nothing will be wasted. So let's be wise and compassionate with our egos and learn how to work with it.